so in order we're gonna get our, our conversation started today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into this bowl of undetermined jelly beans and we're gonna pick the same one first before we dive into some questions about public health workforce. How does that sound today, Jenny? Woo woo, let's get it started. Great, so you go first, uh, just because you're a lovely guest, pick a jelly bean. <sighs> Let's go with the blue one because it looks like it's the sweetest color looking It one. does. I hope it's not one of those. Okay. Cheers. 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 Cool. Okay. That is definitely... Um, not what mint. I anticipated. Oh. Okay. Well, I think I needed some gum for this anyway, so good <laughs> thing this flavor is coming out. Um, so I just wanted to dive in today about public health workforce. And in your role, you're very integral into how we interact with our community. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I wanted to say is, um, how can CCI or any organization support the work that um, the public health workforce does today? So basically any organization, what they can do to support, you know, the community health is just, you know, make sure that we're all informed of what the information is out there. Mm -hmm. um, looking at what the Department of Health and Human Services has to offer, maybe at a county level, mm -hmm. just so that we are all aware of what's out there to help our patients. Because, you know, one of the main merit barriers that we see amongst our patients, especially during the pandemic, was social services, renting assistance, uh, housing assistance, utility assistance, and, you know, just those things are really important in us for us especially for the community health workers to be able to link the patients to those resources. Yeah, and how do you organize your information for your patients? What's the easiest way? Is it, is it multiple way? Do you text them? Do you message them? What sort of, how do you get that information to them? So we usually do it by, you know, case by case basis. Mm -hmm. We always, you know, figure out what it is that the patient mostly needs. Um, and we also have newsletters that we have, a <laughs> that we are always attached to emails um, that gives us alerts about what's the resources, what's going on, especially with Montgomery County, PG County. And usually um, we share that amongst all of our CHWs, either through Teams or we email it to each other. And then we print out pamphlets and whatnot, we give it to the patients based on the need that they identify to us. Yeah, great. Um... Yeah, so you know what? Uh, this uh, minty flavor is sort of leaving, leaving my mouth. I think I might want to try another jelly bean and then we'll dive into another question. Okay. Let's go with this one that looks like a dinosaur egg. Okay, a dinosaur egg. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's coffee. That is the. What was it? <laughs> 2,000 years later. Now that we're back after having that wonderful jelly bean, let's just dive in. <laughs> okay, so um, another question I have for you, Jenny, is what can we do to ensure public health readiness, especially given that we're still in the middle of a pandemic? Well, what we can do for sure is make sure that we have the right information. Make sure that, you know, what's being said by the CDC, following those guidelines, and also, you know, making sure that those myths, you know, those things that patients, people, you know, are confused about, you know, let them know, hey, you know, this is the truth, this is fact, this is fiction. And also making sure that um, we're able to provide, you know, the mental health support to our staff as well. Because mm -hmm. we've been in this pandemic and it's been tired, tiring, very tiring. So, you know, we need to make sure that we have all the information out there in the public health, medicine, everything else, and mental health to support our staff as well. I can pick, and then you could be mad at me if I pick the right one Literally. or the wrong one. <laughs> Let it be. But, okay, I'm gonna do this guy. I hope it's great. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I got sweet. I'm gonna say too. Okay. Honestly? <laughs> honestly. Oh my god. Okay. Now I'm ready to ask this question. <laughs> Why do you think it's essential to have a very um, a diverse public health workforce in today's world? It's very important because what we need to do is present to the patients that we are alike in them. Mm -hmm. We go through the struggles that they do, not the same way, but um, you know, having that perspective from their point of view is very important. We're able to empathize with them. Mm -hmm. So having you know a diverse um, set of colleagues around working is really essential and it'll probably help build that rapport with that um, patient, have that relationship and they'll be able to um, trust us more. I think it's really a, a great thing that CCI hires a very, very diverse um, staff. Um, we meet the community needs, we're always looking to expand and I think that that is one of the most uh, one of the best uh, parts about CCI is that me as a white man, I'm in the minority here. 
And that's really important when you're working in this in this kind of environment.